Joining us now to discuss, Oakmark Fund Portfolio Manager Bill Nigren and NZS Capital co-founder Brad Slingerland. Guys, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, Brad, you uh, have some thoughts specifically uh, around where is a good place to put money at this point, specifically uh, as it relates to uh, regulation coming down the pike and semiconductors. Uh, give us a sense. Start with semis. Sure. So, you know, we think there's no more interesting spot in the tech sector today than in the semiconductor segment, particularly for long-term focus investors. We know there's a lot of noise and a lot of volatility around the trade war and the trade talks that are going, going on now. I think ultimately we're entering sort of an AI cold war phase between, between the West and China, but that China and the Chinese economy can't exist without semiconductors. And frankly, the entire global economy now runs on semiconductors. Everything we talk about that's happening in, on the innovation front relies on these AI chips from companies such as NVIDIA, relies on these uh, chips like microcontrollers from a company such as Microchip. And these are largely U.S. intellectual property. And ultimately, uh, China needs these, the world needs these chips. And they're priced because of the volatility in the market as though they're heavy cyclical and not going to grow. And we think that's just fundamentally not true with the big growth that's coming for semiconductors over the next decade. And Bill, I look at your top holdings. I don't see semis uh, ha having much of a presence. You've got more uh, banks, some other types of stocks. So you have a different take on where people should be positioned now, I take it? Well, at, at Oakmark, we're long-term value investors, and, and that's not been a fun spot to be the past year or really the past five years. And that's because the spread in market PEs has just gotten wider and wider. We're at almost unprecedented levels now where the lowest PE stocks are half the market multiple today. And that lowest sector is full of banks. You know, we have Citigroup, Bank America, Capital One, Ally Financial. They sell at seven to nine times earnings. They sell under book value. Most of them are repurchasing a lot of stock. Dividends are higher than 30-year bonds. Uh, we think <clears throat> as value eventually makes a comeback, the financial sector will lead the way. Bill, that, that seems to make sense, I guess, on some of those metrics. But if you're looking at interest rates potentially going lower, net interest margin can't be too attractive for a lot of those banks. I certainly agree with that short term. But one of the things about the way we invest at Oakmark, we're trying to figure out what a company's likely to earn five to seven years from now. When you look out that far, I think it's fair to guess that interest rates will about match the inflation rate. Uh, our guess is about 2 percent on that level. And that, that's plenty high for these companies to get good uh, net interest margins. Brad, within the media space, do you feel like the consolidation in the U.S. is, is over now that we've seen CBS and Viacom type? Well, I think we could see further consolidation in media. And media is uh, an area that we're very uh, bullish on for the long term. We think that the content producers are becoming more important. They're taking back control of their direct relationship with their customers through streaming. And we're entering this period where um, the, these consolidation with the media, st media studios, they can both have their cake and eat it too. There's a manageable decline in traditional uh, TV subscriptions that's being more than offset by direct consumer streaming. So Disney is extremely well positioned. We think the combined CBS Viacom will also be very well positioned. And we don't think that's going to come at the expense of Netflix or some of the other streaming properties. We think consumers have a large budget to spend on video and it's not shrinking and they're getting more and more value for that budget. And so it's a really positive uh, setup for, for the long term for media. Bill, how do you see the narrative in media and distribution playing out? I see you've got uh, Charter as one of your top holdings, uh, our parent company Comcast as well. The combination of media and distribution was a big story over the past few years. Do you expect that to shift over the next five to ten? What's going to determine who has the most value? Well, we think of both Charter and Comcast as primarily Internet providers. And they currently have by far the most reliable, fastest speed Internet. And we think that will continue uh, throughout our investment time horizon. Uh, I think a lot of investors worry too much about cord cutting. The uh, providing video just isn't that profitable for the cable companies. They make their money from providing Internet service. And with the growth in streaming, uh, we also own Netflix and Alphabet. 
uh, two of the largest streaming video companies and not valued at all uh, as highly per hour watched as the traditional media companies. Uh, we think streaming is going to keep growing and it will benefit all of those companies. All right. We will see how this plays out.